Yeah. Sorry, I'll carry on. Is that all right, like that? No, no. Sorry. Do you want to make it for action, Martin? No, I can't. On your own today. No, no, no. Well, we're going to get to the bottom of you somewhere. Who's going to do one? One, two, three, two, three, three. Did you care what you're walking around with that night? Okay. Uh, you're right. Uh, you're right. Uh, you're talking to me. Uh, you're talking to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Come on, ready? Come on, TV. Fine. Okay. All right. Okay, TV. Here we go. We're on a big wide world. It's a big night tonight for it's you. It's going a big night. We're here at the Royal Albert Hall. Tell us a little bit about tonight's concert and, what, and how you've come up to this stage in your... It's a bit hard to believe that in one short year we're playing the Albert Hall. Always, for me, the pinnacle of success for Rock and Roll. All the great groups I ever saw played the Albert Hall, whether it was Mott the Hoople or the Rolling Stones or T-Rex. This is the place we're going to do it different because tonight, what we're doing for the first time, I explain a bit about it, is we're going to use interactive television. And that means not only you guys out there filming us and everybody else in the world filming us, <laughs> but we're going to be taking on the from European television, from Moscow, from India, from uh, wherever, from Cable News Network, from America. And we're going to be showing that behind us on the video wall, which is a digital wall where we can spread a picture across all those TV sets. But as well as the pictures of the backdrop, we're taking the sound of live television. So that when something interesting happens, if the Reagan Gorbachev interview comes up, on uh, CNN, then we can feed that into the sound system and the Reagan Gorbachev interview becomes part of the music of Zig Zig Sputnik. So it means every night it's different and it's totally topical. It's about what's happening now, which is about this group. So you can see that on the screen and hear it. So it's the first time a group has really interacted with its film. It's never been done before and it's a technological nightmare. So who knows what's going to happen? Are you nervous? Nervous? Whether it will succeed or fail? It's really funny because for the last six weeks I've been as nervous as hell, but for the last six minutes I feel alright. You're feeling relaxed now. This is part of I'm not three concerts that. that you're doing. You're doing the Albert Hall tonight and then you go to America with this production, don't you? That's right. We're going to do a similar thing in America and we'll do the same thing in Madrid and in Rome. See, in the age of television, you don't have to be involved in those old-fashioned rock and roll tours where you trek around the country with a bunch of hippies in tow, you know, doing those old-fashioned places with some horrific backdrop. This is what it's about. Live television. That's our media. The people who get our records are watching TV. How serious do you think people take you? Because you've got an album entitled Flaunter, and yes. a lot of what you're about has been straight, honest hype, isn't it? I think the word hype is the word that you guys use, not us. I think what we're about is great ideas, we're about innovation, and the bottom line is we love rock and roll. You've taken a lot of what you do and space exploration and some of the imagery of that. Sure, because it's about what's happening now. I walk down the street or into Virgin Records and I hear groups talking about the same thing they've been talking about for the last 10 years. What this group is about is about what's happening now. When I walk down the street, when I walk into the video arcade, or when I walk into the local hi-fi shop, or when I turn on the TV. That's what this group is about. It's about 1986, 1987. What's happening out there now? One of the biggest things that you've done is set up this image about yourself and, and in so doing, created a lot of expectations. I think, you know, yes, yeah, people expect the earth from us. I said it's goddamn difficult. Keep coming up with a new idea. People always expect something new. Because from us, you don't just get a record. It's about something else. It's about having a record. When you buy our records, the great thing about it is it's having the record. It's walking through the school corridor with a record under your arm. It's about walking down the street with a record under your arm. Because having that record says, this is what I'm involved in. I'm part of this thing. It's more than music. In Britain, it's about singles, primarily, and then albums follow. In America, it's the other way around. How do you think you're perceived in America? Because here, this is the country where you started, and not in the start with yeah, the first I think thing. in America, it's going real well. That we're selling an awful lot of albums on word of mouth, where people say, hey, it's not correct. You know, they haven't read about it in Rolling Stone, they haven't seen posts in the world of place, they've heard about it on word of mouth, which is better, because it's not like kids found out from Phil, here in the freshest group out of South of England. It ain't some like Frankie goes to Hollywood hype, that rushes over and says, here we are, we're the greatest thing. People find out from Phil, and that's the way we want to say it in America. Yeah. To a large extent, you're... Sounds so goddamn serious. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> now, to a large extent, uh, people haven't seen the Sputnik, have they? Yeah, we've seen in a minute, though. Seen in a minute. Uh, how do you see the life side of your performance, or is it something that's more of a multimedia thing? I think the group's involved in television, and music, and film, and everything that goes with it. This group is about stars. 
music is just part of it. People are buying personality. Now, I know you've done very well in America. I think you've sold about 100,000 copies of your album yeah, in the States right. without any airplay. That's right. Tell us about America, because that's a country where they see what we produce in Britain musically as being something kind of quirky and cultish, don't they? And if anything, you're very cultish. You've created your own... I like image. to think that our group has a global understanding of things. I think our group is about America, it's about England, it's about Tokyo. So I think we have a global, international attitude. I think Americans will understand what our group is about. What our group is about is success, about wanting to be the best. Specifically, in America, you've got a concert in New York, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're going to be playing at the um, Palladium on Halloween tonight, which I guess will be a fun night to play, which is kind of a big deal night in America. And we'll have the whole, you know, technological night there. Who knows? Something quirky about bands like yourself in Britain, where I think they're not seen as a novelty in America, do you think you've got a harder job to convince people of your, your aim? I think not, because I think... As I said earlier, the bottom line of this group is we love rock and roll. It's about Elvis Presley, it's about Eddie Cochran, it's about rock and roll music, wild rock and roll music, simple rock and roll music, played upon the finest technology money can buy. So, uh, we're gonna love it. Something tells me that uh, if you could book a, a flight on a shuttle, you'd be one of the first fans sure. to go up there. Tell, tell us about your ambition. For Believe the me, if you can plug it in, if you can get it with a battery to recharge it, I have one. So tell us about your plans for the future. What, what I'd plans? like bigger power points in my house. That's what I'd like in the future. So I can plug more things in. This is trouble in an itsy bitsy little power point. Well, this is stage two. I'm going to get on that big American grid. Yeah. This is stage two of your career in a way. You've done the album and the singles in Britain. Yeah. And now you're doing these multimedia live yeah. performances. Where Play do you next. go from here? Yeah. Television, film, politics, immortality. Who knows? You see yourself going on for I think we can take it all the way. Yeah. This group, out of all the groups, is the only group that could take it all the way. As a fan, do you work like... Working musicians as a rock unit, or is it something Working like musicians? That? Well, I think it's anything that goes on. <laughs> a lot of working goes on. But music is one of the aspects to what you're about. Sure, music is one of the aspects, and film, and ideas, and visuals, and clothes, and all of those things. I think it's the, uh, our music is the product of conflict. Uh, and you've got a single that's coming out in America. I think it's a slightly different order of release there, isn't it? So yeah. Well, you know, a bit different all over the world. The good thing is then you sell a load on import, so you get twice the mileage. Things, right? What's behind your thinking? I mean, you've obviously taken a, a hard, long look at the way the record industry works. I and think really, really well, people often say that it's like some contrived thing. I don't think it's like that. I think that basically everyone in the group is a real fan of rock and roll. And the way we market our records, or the way we make it, is the word that we think like. When I walk into the store, what would I, as a real fan of rock and roll, in my wildest dream, like to buy? How would I like it packaged? What, kind, what would I love to buy? And that's the group that we make, the group that is our wildest fantasy of rock and roll. And that's what we have. One of the innovations is, um, is having advertisements or commercials between the tracks. Yeah. I mean, where did that come from? Where did the idea come from? Oh, no, they just pop it by a little head. No, seriously. One of those things. I think it's the logical extension of the use of cut-up film imagery and we'll use it. And I'll we'll describe that music as sounding like a splash painting of television images. So it's a logical extension to use advertising. So the sound of advertising is the sound of rock and roll in 1986. When I turn on the TV, I see advertising. That's what rock and roll sounds like. So of course, rock and roll should have that on the record. And a smart rock and roller will be paid for it. And we are, and we have. Now you've seen as the main focus uh, this is something at the moment. Do you think yeah, you'll see your role like that always? Not really, really, I think really the main of it. No, I think that, you know, because I've been more experienced than the others, I can maybe articulate ideas easier at this time, you know. But I think the thing is, you know, everybody in the group is different, you know, and the group works great because everybody's different. Everybody is about something else has a different personality. So everyone is important. The whole wouldn't work without all the individual parts. Music if one part broke down, the whole lot would fail. Music is about fashion, and if anything, in this country, more about fads and fashion of the industry, and not so much about the music, and you're yeah. certainly leading... This is very in-depth, Magenta. Are you sure it should be this long? <laughs> Carry on. You want to answer this? <laughs> yeah. So seriously, I need... Yeah, yeah. okay. So, this is, a, this is an image that you're creating in 1986. Yeah. Do you see it? What do you see from I'll 1986? I'll see it next week. Yeah. Who knows? I can tell you that. Get out of here. <laughs>
Well, good luck tonight. Good and, luck. and when you get to America, I hope you'll accept you. Have to get bored with watching telly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony. Thank you. in America. Thanks very much.